Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So we did this Patreon exclusive for obvious reasons. It wouldn't absolutely would not be able to be put up on you know where. Um, so again, join our Patreon family as little as one dollar a month, um, and you could get the exclusive videos to help us support us in awakening as many people as possible, so we could actually shift this paradigm and uh you know help humanity rise up from the shackles that it's been under we can definitely do this together absolutely absolutely oh man okay here we go let's start over here uh you hear you have a person saying i lived in florida my whole life never seen anything like this they are all bugs in fact uh, they appear to be uh, big swarms of mosquitoes. What you take as these dark clouds, and you might think that they're rain or something. No, no, they're, they're bugs. They're bugs. And some might question, how could that be? What's going on? Is it a plague from God? No, it's it's another plague from the controllers. You do know that this guy's been breeding millions of mosquitoes in multiple places around the globe. Uh, I have seen a lot of comments from our family members down in Brazil and South America that they've never seen swarms of mosquitoes uh, like they have now. And, you know, also that they, they seem to be nastier, more aggressive, and, and the stings hurt more, too. They do, you know. I got, I got, uh, got by one a couple weeks ago, and and darn it, if it's not still just kind of irritating. But I wanted to point out. I mean, look at look look at Bill Gates. Just look at him, and what do you see? If you look by his lips, there's these two lines going down his chin. I mean, this is picture perfect of a puppet. I don't think I've ever seen anyone quite age so perfectly as a puppet. I mean, this should say it all that he is being so controlled. And it's not just him, it's many others, but he's a little different. Yeah, he's a puppet on reptilian strings. And, and that is the reality. So, you know, there's multiple areas uh all around there's a, f a mosquito factory in, in Medellin Colombia and they're making millions and millions why in the world would you make millions and millions of mosquitoes well they they tell us so we could eradicate them you know this is exactly the logic that the system uses let's create more let's see if we can make it more nasty let's see if we could you know make what it affects you uh, make make it more potent Increase the, uh, I'm trying to avoid those GOF terms, gain of you know what. This is what they do. And then they say, well, it's all for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they must be trying to sell bridges in Brooklyn, that old saying. By the way, the FDA issues a warning on contaminated shellfish from these U.S. states in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so be aware of that. At least 31 people have been sickened in Oregon so far, according to state health officials, while they are um, yeah, and have been uh, decimating all sorts of food supply. Uh, it's just it's beyond obvious. And this is why we are going to have a war. Uh, it's because all this is coming out and people understand. Well, right all right away biotoxins how do they get there how do they get there is the question well you know just look to the clouds in the sky just look to all these different programs why do we have mosquito breeding factories well we have russia really off the off the coast of the u.s at this point in time just be really aware you know listen to your listen to your gut listen to uh, that inner voice, cultivate the inner voice. And uh, we don't want to cause fear. But then again, if there's a train rolling down the tracks, you want to tell the person that's having a picnic on the tracks, there's a train coming. Be careful. Be aware. Two U.S. Navy destroyers are following a group of Russian vessels that came within 66 miles of Florida on the way to Cuba last night. 
Analysts believe Russia is strategically sending a warning to the U.S. Yeah, of course, because NATO has encircled uh, Russia. And so, you know, this is that tit for tat, but it's all part of the game plan of the puppeteers. Because, again, you know, all the generals, they're nothing but puppets. The presidents are nothing but puppets. How could Biden be anything but a puppet? I mean, it's just beyond logic to think that Biden or any of them could really make a a decision. And yet people believe that. A real decision. Well, here, this Melbourne... This activity, they're hunting for something, and you see this as panic in the Pentagon as Russian fleet conducts war games near the U.S. coast. Um, I've always felt, and you know, my timing is off uh, from what I expected to see. So I do think that we have shifted at least a little the paradigm. Do I think we could get out of them starting WW3? I would love to see that. Um, if there's a massive awakening that just sweeps the globe overnight, then perhaps we could. But it's a matter of people getting on the rooftops and, and screaming and revealing what's happening instead of being drawn into the left-right uh, paradigm, the divisive paradigm. You, you still have so many people that just pop out and say, you know, the stereotypical things that they've been programmed to say since childhood and think they're giving revelations you're not giving revelations you're just repeating the propaganda that's been given to humanity the whole time and when we have perhaps millions and millions of lives that could be lost if they trigger this maybe hundreds of millions of lives and if we do take those dea gel numbers seriously the forecast is right here again we should take it seriously because, again, they always telegraph everything uh, way in advance. I've always thought um, that it would start with some sort of thing that might look like, uh, again, it was natural. Get us thinking, is this natural? Is this not natural? Um, this is what I've always felt. And yet, we haven't seen it yet. I was kind of expecting things to, to manifest in this time frame. And, and uh, the weeks leading up to where we are now and the weeks leading, uh, you know, going into the summer. Um, when you look to the prophecies of Alois Ermiler, it he talks about harvest time. And so, you know, that's more because you're talking uh, Germany from his perspective and, and, and you know, central uh, Europe, uh, that would be more like into our September, October. It's going to coincide with an economic crash. Yes, September, October, that's usually a time we have big economic issues going on uh, historically. Um, yet, it does feel that we're in uncharted territory in some ways. But there is so much coming out right now, like what we talked about on that Patreon video, this is where they 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 will determine when they start this because when they start to feel like the narrative's getting out of control, that's when they'll trigger it. Mm -hmm. I think so. You know, that's that's when you're if you're in a bad relationship, that's when you really need to watch out. When you're at the very end and people are waking up, or the person is waking up and they realize, oh, huh, well, this is not such a good thing. It's not what I thought it was at all. Boy, I want to go a different direction, and uh, that's where you need to watch out. Yeah, and and there's lots of people jumping on this and talking about this. It's it's not just one source, and as as. Uh, Matt here says we were literally told they'd be off the coast of Havana four days ago. So it's no surprise. Um, this, this is telegraphed. And then they have the hypersonic missiles literally, you know, 60 miles away, 70 miles away from us. Literally could hit us in, in a minute or two that quick. If it is hypersonic missiles that they use. Uh, I think they're going to be using technologies uh, that are different. I think uh, a lot of the satellites that are in place are in place just for this moment that's coming up. So, again, what the guides shared was th they were just warning us not to get too close to the, to the beach because I was intent on taking 
uh, Cindy, uh, you know, maybe I could get her into Florida again, but it'll be up on the panhandle. And she was agreeing, but then I thought, no, I got to have more respect for the guides. Uh, and we'll have to, you know, head a little bit more towards the center of the country as they were telling us um, the most freedom and safest place for the time period that we're in, because this could change as time goes on is towards the center uh, of the country. And they did say, and I don't know if they really wanted to share this so much, but that we were going to see waves of migration from within the U.S. because of the war and the attacks. Now, we can shift paradigms. We can shift, and I think we have shifted to a degree, uh, the ever-changing timeline that we're in they are not set in stone and as much as they want to uh, get us to think that you can't change the will of god but in the will uh, in in reality they're talking about the will of uh, the draco and draconian system that's in place you can because each one of us is a creative uh, source energy fractal that has a tremendous amount of, of power and manifestation Right. I mean, they can only control us until they can't. <laughs> and that's up to us. That's truly up to us. But, you know, when we're talking about visions and seeing things, um, you know, if you if you really look at it, those waves of migration are ongoing. Currently, we've seen them. I mean, people are leaving New York and California in droves. I mean, droves. And they're going out into the country and people that are out in the country and they're used to living out in the country, they're kind of getting overwhelmed by people coming from the city and they're saying, wow, you know, I'm not so much in the country anymore. So that that's definitely already going on. Yes, absolutely. And what is a safe area today may not be a safe area tomorrow. And then that could all change again because they are encouraging mass, mass migrations of people. This has been going on for, for the entirety of the Kali Yuga. It's always been this way. When we look at the big, big unveiling that's happening, this uh, post by Jay Anderson here, who remembers this giant thing that appears to be sucking energy from the sun and then shoots off? Oh, don't worry, you didn't see anything. That's just a camera glitch, yeah. No, this is the reality of what we have. There there are so many different beings out there. This is why, again, uh, when I see people and they'll only quote from the Bible and they'll have all these question marks, and if they discover the book of Enoch, um, you know, it's like, wow, this is amazing. But just go into the Hindu books because they talk outright again about hundreds of thousands of humanoid species in our galaxy. Yeah, look to the indigenous people, the Dogen, look to the Australian aboriginals, look to the Hopi, look to the Cherokee. Uh, you know, these people that were not part of the system knew that we, we've never been alone. That whole mindset is the system's mindset. And again, look to what you know the church did. It, it, it executed heretics. Anybody that disagreed with the, with the church's uh, theology was literally executed and persecuted. And, and this has been what's happened on an ongoing cycle. So I, a lot of people think, uh, that they are taking the side of light when they when they start pushing the narrative that's been given to us by the power structure, but in reality they're pushing the darkness, and and they don't understand that. And I think they I think most of them don't understand that, and and they're really just they're pushing the programming they've received because they feel this is the way that they can help others, but in reality, all they're doing is is just pushing the narrative that the control system wants them to push. It is so unfortunate because, you know, it's like this is how they pit us against each other. They they believe that we are seriously if you're if you're free and you're spiritual, you're you're talking to demons and devils and you are to be feared and and you need to run away from them at at all costs and we are just absolutely horrible and you know we look at them and we're thinking you're pushing the narrative which is pushing all kinds of other narratives which are keeping people in the dark and keeping people 
asleep, you know, all the while using both sides of the human emotion of wanting to do the right thing against itself, creating this pressure, this big bubble of pressure, eventually it is going to pop and people are going to find themselves together on opposite sides of the spectrum and they're going to have to get along. They're going to have to find a way if we're going to survive this because they, the, the, the control system, they're going to do what they're going to do. And time-wise, it, it's not sure. I think they're waiting for humans to reach a certain level of awakening and then they're going to do it. And you really can't put a time on that. You just kind of got to watch and see. And like Mike said, when things start really slipping for them, that's when it's going to happen. So it's like we all have to be ready and realize that that people mean well. And we might have to put a lot of differences aside and, and do this work together in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, not get taken advantage of ever again. So it's going to be a tricky thing that we get to do. Absolutely tricky, as you have uh, Clifford Stone, if you've never heard of him. I've seen him interviewed before uh, as well. He's a U.S. Army sergeant that retired. Now, he says 57 alien species similar to humans are walking among people. And in the Bible, you have people have entertained angels unaware. And when you have people that have this distortion that, you know, you can literally view everything as angels and demons or or humans and there's nothing else and they don't think that extraterrestrials exist and yeah it's a real dangerous distortion because again uh, so many people have been utilized by the system to again burn witches uh, there are people that tortured people in the inquisition for the church and and again you know they walk off to war because they're all patriotic don't understand that you've been manipulated into killing some other poor slob that's been manipulated into being patriotic for his country and it's all just about feeding off of that negative energy and and keeping that cycle going we have to wake up to this so it's it's more than time to call it for what it is there is this um in some circles uh, a tolerance to allow people uh, to continue to have that programmed mindset that's been given to them by the controllers without trying to wake them up. But if we do that, then the controllers just use them to exterminate other people that are woke up. And, and this is what they do time and time again. So, you know, again, if you are awakened, then you, you're not going to be somebody that's going to want to go out and have any sort of jihad or holy war because you know no war is holy it's it's a matter of raising up and beyond this divisiveness that keeps us constantly at war war is how they feed themselves the more we fight each other the more we're feeding them we're giving them a buffet when we when we are actually fighting each other stop the food source they have no no more uh, motive uh, to keep us. If if we rose up in unison, we'd r rise right out of their hands. Mm. You know, it can be very difficult discernment to gain discernment in this world. It takes time because what I what I've come up against are the mistakes that I have made in life. The the things that I was wrong about can just make me stop and think well, well what if I'm wrong but what I had to do was go through these things myself and then discover the answers within myself the the difference is I now go within whereas before I would be f allow myself to be fed information by someone else or information by a book um, or information by you know just any other source but me but now I have become my source. I am the one who goes within. I am the one who looks and deciphers the information. Building my own discernment. It is a muscle. You do have to work it. You will make mistakes. But that's where we got to go. Absolutely. So this is from Jimmy Corsetti at Bright Insight. 
WEF has infiltrated the world's oldest, largest, and most mysterious ancient structure. Gobekli Tepe will not be fully excavated. More than 100 T-pillars that contain answers to our lost past will remain underground indefinitely. Why on earth is WEF in charge of Gobekli Tepe? Well, because, uh, you know, again, it's, it's not the WEF. They're, they're just part of the draconian system. Earth is not run by Homo sapiens, and it never has been in this dark Kali Yuga. So they want to bury the past. They don't want us knowing that we can and had periods where we lived peacefully amongst each other. And, and civilizations in the past were there were no army stores, there were no weapon storage areas, there were no need uh, for any sort of central authority. Can you imagine that? But we see this, especially when we look to the Indus Valley area and we see um, the Harappan culture, for instance, we see people that were living totally at peace and, and not in fear. And our interactions with, again, the uh, non-human beings in, in the Golden Age and in the Silver Age are positive, so we trusted. And what happened was we were infiltrated as we go through uh, the Bronze Age. We got more and more infiltrated by the dark draconian system as we came within their reach. And then they latched on and, and took over the situation and and caused all the misery that we've seen but now we're going back into the bronze age uh and yes there are individuals that have the opportunity to go up into what's the equivalent of a golden age and a 5d existence other individuals can go into 4d um it it's really going to be depending on on what the higher self wants and where we're, where we're resonating at with our own frequencies uh, that's that's the real real key. Um, this is just curious. You know, look, look, our hidden history, our hidden history, and the takeover. Let's look at this one. What is this? It looks like a snake, does it not? It looks like snake. But it's inscribed, I'll give you guys all the links, um, so you can see it is a snake. Whoa, ho, 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 look at that. Again, you know, we have been so infiltrated, so infiltrated, it's, it's beyond imagining. And again, two thirds of the world follows the Abrahamic traditions. What's the Abrahamic traditions? Uh, well, again, it, it's ultimately Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Those, those again, uh, that are coming out of the root of Abraham and Sarah, which again is just another distortion of Brahma and Sarasvati. Uh, which again is is just another way the control system has taken everything and distorted it. Uh, uh, Paul Wallace again, he's written like six books, I think. Um, his books are very very easy to read, and um, I was kind of happy to see that it's not a rehash of watching his videos on the fifth kind, uh, which are entertaining and and um, provocative. There's a lot of channels out there right now that are giving out good little tidbits of information. Use discernment because, again, sometimes uh, some of the info might be a little bit off and biased because of our own lens and our own perspective, which is to be understood because we are all unique fractals of source. Um, but Paul Wallace was uh, doing a, a great job in, in again, exposing how this uh, takeover has happened and how our history has been hidden and how they one of the primary targets in these wars is eliminating things like this eliminating any sort of uh, evidence of the draconian power structure mm. 
and and if you if you caught it i think it was yesterday we did a video on this symbology at the bottom that yeah. that thing um that's showing the picture and then our own government how it's set up you know it, it's, it looks very similar it's not exact not exact but there's got to be something about the shape and the shape of things and how they embed them into into everyday life you know to create spells and well, keep people in a fog if you think about it you could look at this as the base of a tree and a root and then the branches that come off the branches go and surround uh and so yeah this is what they do you know and and we talk about uh, the Abrahamic tradition. Well, you know that's the root, and then you have, you know, Christianity and uh, Judaism and Islam, which all come from you know the same source ultimately. And yet within those, you know, you have thirty like thousand branches of Christianity. There's still more than one branch of Islam, uh, and you have different branches of of Judaism as well together they've controlled or distorted the mind they've given the lens to uh, the eyes of about two-thirds of the world's population so it's again how do we deprogram ourselves because this is programming of the controllers and programming of the matrix so when we when the energy like when i have a, a copy of the talmud and my gosh, you know, I also have copies of others' works from, let's say, darker sources uh, that are in the library. I don't really reference them. I wouldn't reference them anymore, but they're still there. Um, and the energy that comes off the copy of the Talmud is as, as let's just say, draconian as even more than any of those other books which are out, outwardly uh dark so to speak but again this is an upside down world and it's upside down on purpose mm -hmm. yes i know when mike showed me that that talmud i put my hand on it and my arm literally hurt it it hurt it ached it was so strange not something that i want to dig deeper into for me personally but you know animals 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 they have such their heart chakras are so open um they also go through traumas we need to help our animals as much as possible because i think they they can lead the way to unity and understanding and acceptance of people who have different understandings and even different instincts um we can really learn to be better humans by watching the animals as crazy as that sounds it's i think a better direction than looking to the controllers or looking to other people to give us direction the animals they don't they have they don't have an agenda they really have no agenda the agenda is to love and you know in in other cases they need food and food and love go hand in hand and they're just so very sweet but most of all, I love the heart chakras that are open on the animals and they help ground us and they help open our heart chakra to make us a better person. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, again, if you're so inclined, come and join us over on uh, Patreon. And then I wanted to also, again, encourage everybody to join us over on Hearts Home, which is our, our newest uh, channel. Again, everything goes up on uh, Patreon. With Hearts Home, this is all high vibe stuff. So it, there's, if you need a break from the news, if you just want to delve into, okay, well, what is you know some some high vibe uh, things that you can go down? Uh, it's all right here. There's uh, spiritual practice and ritual channel messages, great teachers and gurus, a real look at the real. Yeshua, you know, because it is different. The control system has totally changed it. Christianity, this is the other part I was going to say about Paul Wallace, who was was a pastor for 30-something some years. Uh, again, the early Christians were a very, very uh, eclectic, diverse group. They had many, many different beliefs. They viewed things in different ways. Uh, much of it was much more esoteric, much more mystical than what we have no, the control system turned it into uh, something of a fundamentalist mindset so they can uh, use it in a dogmatic way to turn us against each other where the real message of Yeshua was human potential because he said, 
uh, greater things you will do than I did, did. And he did do miracles. He was uh, what we would call an ascended master. You know, and some will say, again, you know, they'll, they'll quote that fundamentalist point of view. No, he was the literal son of God. We're all sons and daughters of God. Hello? This is self-realization. This is basic uh, Hinduism 101, which is, you know, finding and understanding the self, self self-realization. And that's understanding who you are, because you are a unique fractal of source. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's not one size fits all. Source bliss and namaste. Namaste.